Hi, it's Nikki here and welcome to another video. So as promised, here is my roundup of my first ever market stall experience. Thought this might be a little bit boring if it was just me sat in a chair talking at you for however long. So I've decided to talk over this lovely footage of me painting some cute little raccoons in my sketchbook. So feel free to mute me if markets aren't your thing. But otherwise, I hope you enjoy. Oh, and also if you're curious about any of the supplies I used in the actual painting part of this video, I'll leave everything in the description box below, so yeah. So first of all, I would like to give a big shout out and thank you to Victoria from the gallery box slash Suffolk Vegans. She organised the whole market and she helped me out a lot. She let me share her gazebo and she even lent me a table, so she was a big help. She's a really lovely person and a really talented artist herself, so I would just like to thank you very much, Victoria, for all of your help and for putting on the whole thing and letting me be a part of it. And if you are interested in Suffolk Vegans or Victoria herself, I'll leave links to all of her stuff in the description box below. So yeah. I'd like to give another massive shout out to my boyfriend, Colin for coming with me and helping me out, not just on the day, but in the run up to, and especially two days before, driving me to Colchester on an emergency trip to get ink. <laughs> the whole thing would have been so much more stressful if it was just me on my own. And it was just so nice to just have him there to talk to and to talk for me if I needed it. Cause obviously I'm really socially awkward. So sometimes I just need someone to like do the talking and the socializing for me. And it was just really nice to have someone to look after the stall while I went to the toilet or wanted to go have a little walk around. Colin doesn't really watch my videos, but on the off chance that you're watching this, Colin, thank you very much and I love you. Okay, so here are my thoughts and I would just like to add this disclaimer before I start. I've obviously, I've only ever done one market, which you'll have seen in my last video, and I am definitely, definitely not an expert on literally anything. So please take everything that I'm about to say as it's intended. It's just what my experience was and what I've sort of been reflecting on. It's definitely not gospel. It's not an expert opinion. I'm not saying that I've got this whole thing figured out, you know. Um, and to be honest, it may well be that in a couple of years I have to put out another video telling you to ignore literally everything that I've said in this one. But for now, these are my thoughts. So I did a lot of prep for this market, a lot of prep. I think I said in, I might have said in my last video that like sort of my anxiety is, is a bit over organized and that if I'm worried about something, I tend to get really like weirdly overly organized if I'm worried about something and this market was really no exception. So that manifested in like me setting up the table about five different times in my studio making signs that would say card only, making signs that would say cash only, just in case the card machine broke. Yeah, I did a lot of anxiety prep and I try, I really did try to think of absolutely everything that I could, but I definitely still missed bits. For example, I ran out of ink two days before, so. <laughs> just goes to show that even if you are a massive over prepper and over organizer, you can still absolutely get it wrong. So yeah, the other thing that I got wrong was I really didn't get my card reader prepped early enough or really bought early enough. Um, I ended up going for a square card reader, which was a bit of a drama, to be honest. <laughs> so I initially bought one off of eBay because I was like, well, they cost about £20 to buy them new from the Square website, but I could just get one off eBay. And I thought, surely that's quite a safe thing to do because the card reader itself isn't actually really taking any information. It's literally just a conduit to pass information to like the phone or tablet that you're using. So it must be quite safe. So I found one on eBay and I ended up winning the listing. I got it for about £15, including delivery, and it was brand new, inboxed, and I thought, what they've probably done is they've bought a card reader, used it for literally one market or one event, and then gone, I'm just gonna sell this on because I don't need it anymore, and hopefully I can make a bit of my money back. So I was like, safe, 
brilliant, fine. So I won the listing. When I opened it after it got delivered, I looked at it and I was like, this is fine, perfect. It looks basically brand new. There was a couple of like, little hairs on it, a bit of dust on it, but I was like, whatever. It's basically brand new. It had all the wires and everything, but it had no battery. So I was like, I'll charge up the battery and then I'll get it set up with my phone. So I charged the battery, try to connect it to my phone via Bluetooth. And this little message came up saying, card reader is damaged replace card reader and i googled it googled this error message and this is like basically a fatal error message you can't fix the card reader once it says that you just have to get a new one so i started panicking and obviously so this was like the week before the or week and a half before the market and i was panicking so i was like right i'm just gonna have to buy a new one because i need the card reader and then i'm just gonna have to deal with this broken one once i know i've got one coming that works so I went on the Square website and they were on back order for two weeks so I wouldn't be able to get it in time for the market and then I was like oh I'm gonna have to get it off Amazon and I've got so much stuff in this market off Amazon and I hate buying things off Amazon but sometimes you just can't avoid it. So I ended up buying a new Square card reader from Amazon and I had to get it sent the next day and it ended up costing me like twice the price that it would have cost me if I'd have just bought a new one in the first place. <laughs> So the new card reader came and I got it all set up and it worked but then it took me a whole week for my bank account to get authorised so that was great. Luckily it did get authorised in time for the market but it was just a very stressful time and with the second hand one that I bought off eBay I went to raise a return for it and it said that the seller didn't accept returns but I was like I think you will in this situation. So I raised a return and basically said look it doesn't work it's broken and sent screenshots and within about 15 minutes the seller came back and was like oh yeah no that's fine you can have a refund don't bother sending it back either it's fine and I was like Oh man, did you know? Did you know it was broken and were you just chancing it that you might be able to get some money for it? Ugh. I like to think that's not what happened, but you just never know. So yeah, that was quite stressful. Um, so I would definitely recommend if you are going to do a market, get your card reader like three, four weeks before you market and get it all set up and get yourself authorised just to avoid that stress. But apart from that, I really can't criticise the Square Card Reader at all. I can't fault it at all, it's amazing. It, it worked perfectly well um, on the day. It took all the transactions perfectly fine. But it's really easy to use the Square Card Reader. You basically just download the app onto your phone and then I did this manually, but you can link it to your Etsy shop and it'll bring all your inventory th through but I manually set up all of my stock on the app. And then when someone wants to buy something, you literally just like tap on the item and you like make an order in the app and then just process it through the card machine. You can send them a receipt via an email or text as well. But you can also put transactions through, even if they're paying by cash, which I would definitely recommend doing because it then updates all your inventory and basically keeps a, a log of all your transactions even if they haven't actually gone through the card reader. So even though I had quite a bit of drama with it in the beginning I would definitely recommend it and it was it was really good in the end and I I was gonna sell it on after I did the market if I wasn't gonna do another one but I've definitely I'm definitely gonna keep it because it's a really good bit of bit of kit to have. So in terms of stock I basically just took a little bit of everything that I have on my Etsy shop. So I took some art prints, I took some stickers and some greetings cards because I really wasn't sure what was gonna sell. I kind of like took things based on what sells well in my Etsy shop, but I was like, that could be completely different when you go to a market and boy, is it different when you go to a market? <laughs> my greetings cards did amazingly well, like literally so well I sold out of some designs. I basically took four of almost every design that I do and annoyingly the only designs that I didn't take that I also do as prints. I had people pointing to the prints that were on display being like, do you have that as a card? And I was like, yeah, not here though. <laughs> So yeah, I definitely regretted not taking every design that I did, but I wasn't to know. I Because those those cards that I didn't take, they don't do very well in my Etsy shop, so I just assumed that they would be fine, but like you literally, you don't know until you do it. And honestly, I reckon if I did another, another market, I'd probably find that completely different things sell. So you really never know. 
I did sell a few stickers. They did alright, I didn't sell many. I did sell a couple of them though. Um, and my art prints did really poorly, so I, th I think next time I'll not bother printing as many, like especially for the market, because I ended up printing quite a lot, thinking that I would sell them. I do wonder though, because I had all of my greetings cards I had out on display, like on these little stands, of, they're for like decorative plates but I used them for greetings cards. I had most of them out on these little stands and I'm wondering if that's why they sold better than the prints because the prints were like in a little wicker basket that you kind of had to rummage through and I'm wondering if people didn't want to rummage through the basket and that's why my prints didn't sell very well so I wonder if next time it's worth trying actually having the prints out. Although having said that I did, pr I did have one of each print pinned to the wire grid at the back of the table so they were clearly displayed like it was clear that they existed but yeah I do wonder if people just don't want to touch things like because of covid who knows but yeah I think definitely I'll try having them a bit more visible next time rather than in the basket I ended up putting every single print and greetings card in its own individual biodegradable plastic bag which I did because I knew people would be picking things up and touching them and I knew that the, it was probably going to be a bit windy and there might be like dust and stuff flying about and I just wanted to protect everything, especially because people are going to be buying it. They don't want to buy something that's potentially got someone else's like greasy fingers all over it. So I packaged them all up separately, which was a good idea at the time, but I'm kind of paying for it now because I ended up obviously bringing quite a lot, well, almost all of the art prints back. So now when I'm selling them on my Etsy shop, whereas before on my Etsy shop I'd kind of got myself to a point where I was literally using the least amount of plastic bags per order as I possibly could. So I was like putting all of the prints in one plastic bag if they would fit. So I've gone from that to like now they're all individually wrapped again, which is kind of annoying because it feels like a bit of a step back, but I genuinely, I'm really not sure what other way I could have done it. I mean, I suppose I could have had like one of each out in a plastic bag and then just have had everything else sort of behind the table and just like put it into a bag if people wanted it when they bought it. But I don't know, that just seems really faffy and I don't know if that just creates more of a problem than it solves. I don't know, I'd love to know if you do markets and you sell similar things to me, um, I would love to know how you get around that. You might be like, well, I just sell things and don't bring it home, <laughs> which which is kind of what I hoped would happen. But yeah, let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions. I am all ears. So in terms of pricing, I kept all of the prices for my products basically the same as what they are in my Etsy shop. The only difference being that I had a few like discount offers running on the day. So basically anything that was £2, which would be stickers, greetings cards, A6 prints, I did those three for £5. So that was mix and match as well. So like if you wanted like a sticker and a greetings card and an A6 print, I would do that three for £5 because they're all £2 each. So that seemed fair. And then my larger prints, so the postcard size prints and the A5 prints, I did three for £8. And then I had a few of the small and misprinted stickers that were like £1.50 each or I was doing those for three for four pound and honestly genuinely think this made a difference in terms of the quantity of products I sold because people would pick up like one or two cards and I'd be like oh just so you know the greetings cards are three for five pound or they pick up a sticker and I'd be like just so you know the stickers are three for five pound and people would be like oh all right then and then they'd get three so I definitely think if the discounts weren't there, people would have just bought like one greetings card or two greetings cards or two stickers. So yeah, I definitely think people ended up buying a third based on the fact that it was only a pound more. Obviously this was something that I could do for the market because I wasn't having to worry about Etsy fees or like postage fees or anything. It's something that I'd like to do on my Etsy shop as well, but it's really hard to justify on there just because the fees are so high. But if you are doing markets, I would definitely recommend doing discounts and deals just on the day because I found that I ended up selling more so I reckon it's a good idea. I also had my usual freebies so I had my regular little squirrel freebie stickers and I gave one of those out with every single order and I also had I printed out more of my business cards and I took those so my business cards I think I have like four different designs and I just it's literally just I pick one at random and I also just had the business cards out so even if you weren't buying everything if you wanted to pick up a business card 
but like, that was fine. And people really seemed to like the fact that there were like different designs of the of the business cards. People seemed to think that was really cute. So I definitely think um, taking all that stuff was a good idea. But I think next time what I might do is get special business cards or a few special business cards printed. Or I could even just write it on the back and have um, like a discount code for my Etsy shop. So when people if people have bought something or if people have just literally picked up a business card it then encourages them to then go spend money on my Etsy shop as well. That sounds really icky saying encouraging people to spend money on my Etsy shop but you know what I mean it's like just an another incentive for people to even visit my Etsy shop. So I think next time I'll probably do that. I also had, you'll have seen in my last video, I also had my sketchbook out on one of the stands that I took which was something that I was kind of umming and ahhing about because mostly I was just afraid that it would get damaged or stolen or something and obviously for me my sketchbook is like a really precious thing so I was really worried about it getting damaged but I decided to take it in the end and I, I'm really glad I did because although I don't actually think it equated to any more sales a few people did flick through it and have a look and it seemed to really make people happy like it really made them smile seeing my artwork and that in turn made me really happy and made me smile and made me feel nice about myself <laughs> that sounds icky as well it made me feel nice about myself because people were looking at my art and it was making them happy so if that's something that you're comfortable doing if you have a market and you're like an artist i would definitely recommend taking a sketchbook or original art or something like that just for people to look at because it just adds another sort of level of engagement as well and it adds another sort of layer to you as a person but i think the, the key for me for a market stall is levels trying to get as many different levels in terms of height on the table as possible because i think as well that the market i was at a lot of the other stalls had a lot of height and I think when you've got flat work which like prints and greetings cards are f and stickers are flat and then you've got a table you really need to build up not only to utilize the space in the best possible way to show everything but also so that you don't completely get lost among the sea of like other stalls and I think I definitely did it did help having the wire grid because that added a bit of height but I, I feel like there's more I could do. I wonder if I could get like some kind of, I don't know, just some kind of structure. I'm kind of thinking like a, a bridge sort of thing so I can have things displayed underneath it and also on top just so that you're using more of the space better to show more stuff. I don't know, again, if you have any experience of this, do let me know in the comments because I'm like, I just wanna know everything now. <laughs> so I was really worried about the sort of cash float situation that we were gonna have because it. I, I was trying to figure out a way of like going to the bank and getting like large amounts of coins and it just seems really like difficult to do. But then I realised that because we were going to be on the seaside we could literally just go to like the arcades and the amusements and because they have like change machines in there that you put like a tenner in it, it gives you like pound coins. So basically when I got there I <laughs> we had like 60 pound in notes and I just gave Colin like I think I gave him like 20 pound and I was like just go get me pound coins and 50 p's. It worked out pretty well actually because everything on my stall was either around pound or something 50 so I didn't need anything smaller than 50p which was quite nice. The one thing I did notice is that um, sort of the most important denominations, is that the word? I don't know if that's the word but the most important things for me to have were definitely pound coins, loads of those is a great idea and five pound notes as well because I think I had like four five pound notes or something and like two ten pound notes. It was something like that and um, I ended up, I only had like one five pound note left at the end of the day but I'd like gained £10 notes. I think definitely the next market that I do, I'm gonna get way more £5 notes. And I think I might only start, I still might only start with like two £10 notes because I just seem to keep gaining them. Overall, I had a really good time. I was really nervous. I was really scared that I would find it really difficult. I would find it really difficult to speak to people because like I'm sure I've said in videos before, like my 
specific brand of anxiety is definitely based around social situations, like speaking to people, especially people that I don't know. I always feel like I either say the wrong thing or people think I'm really weird or I don't say it enough and people think I'm rude. So I was really worried about that, but luckily it, it was okay because I found that if you just like ask people if they're okay and then like I was like what's your favourite animal and then if they said an animal that I painted I was like I have a sticker of that so I kind of like I don't know I kind of like had prepared things that I could say to people and that definitely helped but everyone was super nice so I like I really didn't have anything to worry about it, it, my social anxiety issues are definitely a me problem it's not a problem with people it's a problem with me because I could literally be about to meet like the nicest person in the entire world and still be like what if they don't like me but there were also a few quiet periods here and there so I could just kind of sit down and be a bit quiet and not really have to speak to anyone apart from Colin and also having Colin there to speak for me sometimes was really helpful. So yeah, overall I had a really good time. Everyone was super nice, everyone was super complimentary. I'm defo gonna do another one. I think there's another one gonna happen uh, just before Christmas, so I really need to make some more Christmas cards. Um, and I would say if you're thinking of doing a market yourself, but you're anxious or scared about it, you don't know what it's gonna be like, I would say it's really worth, if you can and if you can afford it and it makes sense for you to do so, I would say it's really worth just taking the leap and giving one a go because it's so much fun and it's actually really rewarding. But like I said, only do it if you can afford it. Like I'm really lucky in that I have a full-time job that funds all of my drawing and illustration and painting stuff so I don't really have to worry about you know I'm, I'm still going to be able to pay my bills if I don't sell anything if I go to a market so that pressure is very much taken off by the fact that I have a, a, a good job that um, that pays the bills. Also on that note full disclosure I only took about £100 on the day that's not even profit that's literally just what I took so <laughs> profit wise I, pr I probably didn't even make any money in fact I probably spent money to be at this freaking market. <laughs> <laughs> so I really didn't make big bucks at all but for me it was all about the experience and the exposure which I definitely think made it worth my while and I think and people have said this to me as well that like you really can't expect to like go into your first market and, and make a lot of money because obviously you're having to buy a lot of the stuff like for the first time so I think your costs for the first market are definitely going to be a lot larger than your second, third, fourth, fifth etc and I think probably the more you do you do the more it'll, everything you've bought will probably like pay for itself if that makes sense so yeah I know when you think that I'm like uh big daddy big books over here because I'm not I just went for a good time <laughs> uh but yeah I think that's pretty much all I had to say um rambled on now for about half an hour so I'll definitely <laughs> I'll be ending it here um Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that it was interesting slash entertaining slash useful. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I would super appreciate it. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter and TikTok and all the places. And if you like my work, please consider having a little browse through my Etsy shop because you might see something that you like and I'll leave links to everything in the description box below so if you want to find me that's where I'll be um but yeah I'm gonna end this here thank you again for watching I hope you're taking good care of yourself and I'll see you in the next video bye Thank you.